Our chapter sent over a team of five to the village of Mikomago in the Masaka district of Uganda. We are here to perform a technical assessment trip. This year we focused on Mikomago to understand the water needs and specifically what we might be able to do to help them. We're here to learn as much as we can about the village of Mikomago, how they use the water, where they get their water, whether that water is clean. We seek EWU's hope because we, find out, we found out that uh, there is a big need of clean water in our area. The residents of Mikomago get their water from two types of sources. There's both open pits and shallow wells with hand pumps. In this area, people are getting water far away from their home. We're here at one of two working pumps in Miko Mago. This is pretty far away from anything. And if you can see, there's a pretty steep incline. A lot of times they'll send the young children with these jerry cans that they fill up with water that can weigh up to 40, 50 pounds. Seeing the children carrying the water was a very humbling experience. We're here to get a few samples of the water, see what kind of bacteria we can find. The samples we got from Miko Mago basically told us what we already knew, that the water was a very poor quality. According to your observations, those are wells uh, with water are affected, they have infections. Many of the children in Miko Mago don't understand that they need to boil their water before they drink it. So this leads to many cases of typhoid and diarrhea in the community. The residents of Mikomago have selected eight people to form a water committee that will take ownership of and manage the project going forward. Over the past week, we've had several meetings with the water committee in order to better understand the financial, land ownership, social, and political aspects of this project. We're also trying to understand what they would use more water for if it was available to them. And we're going house by house, literally trying to find out how much water they consume, uh, where they get it from, how far they have to travel in order to, to get it. And then we want to understand also if they had more water available, what would they use it for? Most of them said they could raise more chickens, they could have more water for their gardens. These are things that drive the local economy. We could really help to develop this area. Something that is happening even as we're here is the electric company is installing lines. They're about to get something they've never had before, and that's electric power. And that is going to be literally a life-changing event for these folks. The power that comes from these lines can do some of the hard work that they currently need to do. Uh, I felt encouraged this year. Power has been brought into the village, and we're hoping to install an electric pump and that will be a much better means of distribution of the water. The best outcome of this project will be that each family has better access to clean water that will help the entire economy to improve and improve their quality of life. Uganda is one of the most welcoming places I've ever visited. That's why I've decided to come back. Working with John Mary has just been tremendous. He set up the whole program from the beginning. He made the application to Engineers Without Borders. And he really has a heart and cares about the local people. He's been our driver, our translator, and uh, best of all, our friend. So we are happy to have with the Bechtel, Engineers Without Borders, to be with us. I would like to thank the EWPs to decide to come and work with us.